I'm Rebecca Papukaru, and I'm going to be reading a poem to you from my debut collection, The Panic Room. The poem is called Posterity. Is it just my imagination, or do I really need to put on my bra in order to write? Girls, pull in those lies. A pen in my mouth, lest I bite my tongue when the whip comes down. I wear heels to the hobbling sort. Before they make me run, I'll demand a head start. Palm fronds may wave in Poland now, but don't tell me some things don't change. This one's for posterity. Posterity, you say. A long walk off a short pier. Better to stay in the car, bra in my mouth. Hi, I'm Rebecca Papukaru, reading a poem to you from my debut collection, The Panic Room. This poem is called Distance. Love lost to reading. Books, journals, even signs in the distance. Playbills before curtain, the crowd at a distance. Suppressing my embarrassment by withdrawing into print. Hubris. As if I could disinherit distance. Why did I sit with the straps of my purse binding my feet, reading discounted books, learning love at a distance? I should have asked the time, unashamed to be unoccupied, or dared looking up and off into the distance. Hi, I'm Rebecca Papucaro. I'm going to read you a poem today from my debut collection, The Panic Room. The poem is called, If I Had Your Cock, and it is suitable for work. If I had your cock, I would use it as a mail opener, paperweight, Tetris partner, emotional sundial, put up your picture with it, cheat on my taxes with it, grind pills, pigment, and spices with it. And it goes without saying, I would shoot pool with it, start fires with it, write my name with it, cross my T's and dot my I's with it, carry old men's shopping bags with it, shoehorn my good pumps on with it. And rolling out dough with it would offer you a selection, plain, chocolate, or cinnamon. Then I'd figure out some way to floss with it. Never hesitate to mention it in polite conversation. Use it casually, formally, lovingly, disdainfully. Point out shooting stars with it. Look at porn on the net with it. Go to market displaying my merchandise on it, my standard unit of measurement, Sterling standard, star sheath in our nation's bread basket. Hang our dirty laundry, gray and weeping on it, while I rest my feet on it, stirring a G and T on it, and write you this poem in invisible ink. Hi, I'm Rebecca Papukaru, and I'm going to be reading you a poem today from my debut collection, The Panic Room. The poem is called On Watching an Eastern Bloc Comedy. It's hard to pull off a getaway in a lada, mud road, sudden appearance of a goat. I'm one generation apart from all this and ashamed of my father before his refrigerator, mourning age spots on lettuce. Our lecturer calls it brilliant. The late director's parsimonious use of film stock. He has made a pot au feu from onion skins. Would he call my father a genius? In undershirt and slippers, hunched over the sink, rescuing bell peppers for soup stock, muttering, still good, got in himmel, still good. Oh, hi. I'm Rebecca Papukaro, standing by my bookcase for some reason. And I'd like to read a poem for you. Uh, it's from The Fiddlehead, number 276, Summer Poetry 2018 issue. And it is called Shy Nipples. And uh, I think that says it all. Okay. Say it. Say this word. Nipple. An erotic, no? Now try it with this modifier, inverted. Not unusual, the pediatrician told mother, but hardly common. 
who left his office with instructions for the Hoffman technique, today disavowed by nipple hygienists. My pubescent breasts had dimples for noses, my plight three braids. The best pledged a sheepish stiffening in frigid weather, but the dreaded third tug at my lactiferous ducts till the cows come home, the saw surgery, my sweater puppies would have to get along without snouts. Breastfeed? Sure, with the aid of a hospital grade electric pump. Then one cold morning, there they were. Flat, yes, but protuberances all the same. Twin drunks, popping out for a smoke, then withdrawing to the warmth of their respective taverns. Could I lose my virginity on an iceberg? Some marquee, a pair of busted neon lights above my door, yet I never lost a patron. Now in midlife, they found an audience. Manual exams, mammograms, ultrasounds, such public airings have gone to their heads. Denied fulfillment of their true design, they strain against my bra cups, eager for the next audition, freckled noses upturned, unmilked wonders scenting spring. Hi, I'm Rebecca Papucaro, just standing here casually next to my bookcase. Uh, I'd like to read a poem to you called Holy Thighs. It's about shopping for pantyhose in France. And it comes from The Fiddlehead, the Summer Poetry uh, 2018 issue, which I highly recommend. Uh, and there are some French words in this poem, so if there are children in the room, you may want to ask them to leave. Holy Thighs. Hosiery Department. Monoprix, Versailles. Medium, the younger of two sales clerks rules, having received my venison of time wayen. I leave for the aisle, but the doyenne orders me to stop and lift my skirt. Sacre crise, holy thighs. What size nylon casings could ever circumscribe such clappers of thunder? Men's thighs hold the farts of antiquity. Abraham ordered his servant to place his hand under the patriarchal thigh and swear, a common form of testifying. Monotheism, it was believed, resided there. Zeus stitched the infant Dionysus into his thigh from whence he was born to raise hell a second time. My lot, hocked fromage frais and metromat veins. Roquefort, not marble. Moist where they meet, papery when parted, a dairy maid's saddlebags. Norman Barn before dawn. The maid safe on the shore while her lover slips and slides. Fruition in friction. She wipes her thighs with her skirt and picks up her pail unruffled as her milk. Thanks.